Hello guys and welcome back to the FE exam review series where I cover the most common FE problems that you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video, we'll be covering a mechanics of material section problem, specifically under part B, stresses and strains. Now also, if you are currently studying for your FE exam, go ahead and let us know in the comments below which FE you're preparing for. And now let's dive in. Oh yeah, Now let's go over the problem. So we are giving a simply supported beam with a uniform distributed load. We are also giving the cross section of the beam and we want to determine the maximum bending stress in megapascal. So the first thing you guys need to do is go to the reference manual and try to find the maximum bending stress equation. It is under mechanics of materials and the equation is sigma max is equal to mc over i, okay? Now m, that stands for the maximum moment. So the first thing you guys need to do is find the maximum moment for this load, for this beam, okay? And then you multiply by c, so c is the distance from the neutral axis to where you have the maximum bending stress, okay? And then you're gonna divide it by i. So i is the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. So you have to find ixc of this rectangle, right? Because the beam here has a rectangle cross section, okay? Now, once you determine all those variables, then you can plug it in into the equation to find the maximum bending stress. The other thing I would watch out for is the units, okay? So make sure that all the units cancel nicely, and at the end, you should get megapascal. So with that, why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and then try to attempt the problem, okay? So when you guys are studying for the FE exam, it's very important that you guys solve the problems on your own without looking at the solution because that's how you're going to learn and that's how you're going to learn from your mistakes as well, okay? So go ahead and pause it, and I will see you guys in a little bit. Now, if you guys find this problem helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely. Also, if you haven't downloaded the cheat sheet yet, make sure that you guys do. You can download it here. It has very important equations and concepts that you need to know for your FE exam. Now let's go ahead and solve the problem, guys. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the reference manual and take a look at the equation. So here it says the maximum normal stresses in a beam due to bending. So that's the same thing as the maximum bending stress, okay? So this is the equation we're gonna use. Now, for the moment, let's just ignore the plus and negative sign, okay? But I'll talk more about it at the end of the problem. So first, let's find the maximum moment and then we're gonna find C and then moment of inertia, and then plug all that in into the equation. Now, to determine the maximum moment for this problem, so we can either draw the shear in the moment diagram, and then from there, we can determine the maximum moment, or we can go to the mechanics of material section, and at the end, we are giving these tables here, okay? And so these tables, they have the type of beams, and then slow deflection, elastic curve, and then the maximum moment. So just make sure that you guys remember that you have this, okay? Now, the problem that we have, we actually have a simply supported beam with a distributed load, right? A uniform distributed load, which is similar to this beam, which means that the maximum moment is going to be WL squared over 8, where W, that's the distributed load, and then L, that's going to be the span of the beam. Now, let's go ahead and plug in the numbers into the equation. So we have W, which is 6 kilonewtons per meter. So I'm going to go ahead and write the units down and then we're going to make sure that at the end everything cancels nicely. And then we're going to multiply it by L which is 8 meters and this is going to be squared and we're going to divide it by 8. Now let's take a look at the units. So here we have meters squared which is going to cancel with this meter. We're going to be left with meters. So here we're going to have kilonewtons meter which is good because that's the unit for moment. Okay. Now if you guys plug in these numbers you're going to get 48 kilonewtons meter. Now let's find C. So C, as we mentioned before, is the distance from the neutral axis to where we have the maximum bending stress. Now because we have a rectangle and we have symmetry, so we have two maximum bending stress. One is going to be at the top outermost fiber and then the other one is going to be at the bottom, okay? Now C is just going to be the distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber or to where we have the maximum bending stress. Now keep in mind that this C here, this distance is going to be the same as this distance here, okay? So C is just going to be half of 200, right? So we're just going to do 200 millimeters and then we're going to divide it by 2, which is going to give us 100 millimeters. 
Now, one more thing we need to do is unit conversion, because if you guys take a look at the moment here, it's in meters, right? And then here, this is in millimeters. So we need to convert millimeters to meters, okay? So all we need to do is just take 100 and divide it by 1,000 in order to get meters. And if you guys do that, you're going to get 0 0.1 meters. Now let's find the moment of inertia. So here we have a rectangle. So let's go to the reference manual. So if you guys go to statics, here you are giving the equation for the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis for a rectangle, which is bh cubed over 12. So this is the equation that we're going to use. So b is 150, and then the height is going to be 200. Okay, so let's plug that in here. So we're going to have two, 150 okay, millimeters. We're going to multiply it by the height, which is 200 millimeters to the power of 3. And then we're going to divide it by 12. Okay, now for the units, guys, here we're going to have millimeters to the power of 4. Okay, so again, we do want everything in meters so that everything cancels nicely. And also megapascal, that is the same thing as meganewtons per meter squared. So we must have everything in meters. And so what we can do here is we can just divide this whole thing, okay, by a thousand to the power of four, okay, because we are converting millimeters to the power of four to meters to the power of four, okay? So we're going to have to divide by a thousand and then raise it to the power of four. Now, if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.0001 meters to the power of four. Now let's go ahead and plug in everything into this equation. So we have the maximum moment, which is 48 kilonewtons meter, and we're going to multiply it by C, which is 0 0.1 meter, and we're going to divide it by the moment of inertia, which is 0 0.0001 meter to the power 4, okay? Now for the units, notice guys here, the meters and this meter is going to cancel with meters to the power 4, and we're going to be left with meters squared because meters and meters, that's meters squared, so it cancels. And then we're going to be left with kilonewtons per meter squared, which is the same thing as kilopascal, okay? But we want megapascal. So let's go ahead and take this and then divide it by a thousand, okay? So this is another unit conversion that you guys must know, must memorize. You just, you, you're going to be much faster during your FE exam. It's very common to go from kilopascal to megapascal or vice versa. So when we go from kilopascal to megapascal, we always divide by a thousand, okay? So now if you guys do that, you're going to get 48 megapascal. Now the maximum bending stress is going to be 48. Now note guys here in this problem, we did not have a multiple choice. We had fill in the blanks. Now on the FE exam, that's one of the formats that you might get. It's not all multiple choice. So make sure that you guys know that and make sure that you guys expect it. Okay. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Now let's go over that positive and negative sign that we ignored for a bit. Okay. So what we have here, guys, we have a stress distribution for a positive moment. And what that means is when we have a positive bending moment, the fibers at the top are in compression and the fibers at the bottom are in tension, okay? And what that means is that here, we're going to have the maximum bending stress in compression, and then here, we're going to have the maximum bending stress in tension. So this 48 here, so here we're going to have minus 48 because it's in compression, and then here we're going to have positive 48 because in is in tension, okay? So they both are maximum bending stress. It's just one is in compression, which means one is negative, and one is going to be positive because it's in tension, okay? Another thing that's very important for you guys to remember is that at the neutral axis, the bending stress is always zero, okay? And then also, one more thing, this here is specifically for this shape here, okay? For the, when we have a rectangle cross section or when we have symmetry, okay? This is how the stress distribution looks like. Now, if we have a T-beam or I-beam, it's gonna look different, okay? So just keep that in mind. I really hope you guys found this problem helpful. Now, the next FE problem that we're going to post is going to be on ductility. So make sure that you guys subscribe, hit the bell, so you guys don't miss out on any future videos.
Now, if you're currently studying for your FE exam and you feel like you're not progressing or you, maybe you're not using the right study material, then make sure to check out our courses at jennyprep.com. Our courses cover everything that you need to pass your FE exam. And also, before you guys go, make sure to check out this playlist here that has over 100 FE problems. It's really going to help you with your FE preparation. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great productive week and I will see you guys on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh, yeah.